Hello and welcome back. It's Alex Wise here and today I'm going to edit this image that I took at Cadillac Canyon in Victoria, Australia. So for this image, I'm really looking to play on this nice water movement that I captured. I got a bit wet taking this photo, as you can probably imagine, and then I've got some nice light here that I want to play with. Um, so I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to straighten the horizon. I generally like to use the ruler tool, which can be found here by under the eyedropper area, select ruler, and then I generally drag across the horizon uh, and then go image, oh, image rotation, arbitrary, hit OK, and that straightened it. Now I'm just gonna quickly crop it. I have accidentally missed a bit, but I'm just going to run the brush over it and reclaim it. Okie dokie. Facebook will be gone. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do first, I'm just going to um, use a curves layer first, just to add some subtle contrast to the image. Generally, I do this by giving the lights a nudge. And now I'm just going to pull down on my mids and then pull down on my shadows. Um, I guess for this image, just a bit of context on how I'm looking to edit it today. So I'm really looking to play on this nice golden light hitting the hills and use this to contrast against oh, Facebook, go away. <laughs> um, to really contrast this against the rest of the scene, especially like the nice, I guess, um, Udi clouds that we've got going on. Cool. So with that done, um, I'm now going to play with my luminosity masks. Um, so if this is your first time watching, luminosity masks are fantastic if you want to make very selective changes to the dynamic range of your image. So as an example, um, let's make some changes to the shadows first. So using luminosity masks, I can actually select um, a very specific shadow range in my shot. So let's do this now. Um, where it's white, that indicates where the change is being applied. So what I'm really looking for is where I've started to lose my detail. And we're going to try to bring some of that back a little bit. Um, just for reference, I'm really focusing on this area down here. I'm not looking to recover shadows on this area here. We'll come back to that later. Cool. Okay, next what I want to do is have a bit of a play with a soft light layer set to 50% gray. And um, this is going to become my burn layer. So I'm going to select the paintbrush tool, just resetting the colors back to default by selecting this here. Um, and now I'm going to select the capacity to probably around 10 or so, just very pretty subtle. And I'm just going to do some painting just to really try to make these clouds a bit more pronounced. Okie dokie. Um, next what I want to do, um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I want to really make this a bit darker to really make this orange stand out more. So we're just going to lightly paint over the top. Cool. Next, I'm going to create a soft light layer. Again, similar to what I did before, filling it with 50% gray. The purpose of this one will be for dodging. Um, so what I'm going to do, I just want to give this area here a bit of a nudge. Similar to the clouds really, where I'm just painting over areas just to make it look a bit more pronounced. Okay. 
Um, as you can probably see, I'm just painting over where there's some nice water streaks in the water and just trying to use the sand, um, the brown bits to separate. I'm just doing the same again as this time I just want to do some color dodging so I'm going to sample this orange and I just want to paint over the horizon a bit just to make that a bit more pronounced by doing by sampling the color um, that allows me to essentially paint that color um, across the scene this could be really helpful if you perhaps have a sunset image um, and the sky is really nice and uh, orange, but you want to paint some of that orange into the rest of the scene to give the impression that that beautiful color was rebounding across the rest of the scene. Um, I'll probably come across that, use that te technique, sorry, in another video in the track. So stay tuned on that one. Um, so we're just going to continue painting a bit. Sorry, I was just sort of yapping there for a bit. <laughs> just a bit on here in the horizon too. Oh, it's a bit too messy there. We're just going to lower the opacity for this bit on the horizon. Cool. Um, I've just gotten a little bit too heavy handed um, above the headland. So I'm just going to use a layer mask to paint over this with the color black. This will effectively remove my sloppy painting cool just going to drop these into a folder as it makes it a bit easier to um, show before and after using a levels on my mids or mid tone sorry cool and now I'm just going to make a saturation change um, here on the headland just want to warm that up a bit and pump the saturation it's probably a bit too heavy handed Um, something I sometimes like doing um, to my shots using the channel mixer it's a quite an interesting way of um, giving the colors a nice warm feel to them oh, sorry more of a vibrant feel warm's not the right word um, and basically what you do you open up the channel mixer which can be open down here oh don't have my glasses on clearly um, so you select channel mixer and then basically for each channel so in this case the red you change it to 120 and then decrease each other channel each other within that channel by minus 10 and then you go through and do it for each one so here we've got our green channel we change it to 120 reduce this by 10 reduce blue by 10 and then lastly we've got our blue channel we're changing this to 120 decreasing this by 10 again Oop. cool um, so just before and after it just leaves a really nice effect on the image hey that's my opinion anyway um, I learnt that from Matt Donovan um, or also otherwise known as it's worth a shot I'll link to the video where he talks about that 
Um, it's a really great editing video um, and one where people can learn a lot more than they learn watching my videos, that's for sure. Um, so we're just going to drop that in. Um, the reason I'm doing that, as I said before, it just makes before and after really easy and quick. Um, so now I'm going to create a luminous, uh, not a luminosity mask, an Orton effect using a luminosity mask. So we're going to select our lights um, and then we're going to create a smart Orton effect. Yep. Um, once it starts, once this does its thing and eventually brings up the radius screen, I'm going to select 50. Um, as this was shot my, with my Nikon D850, it's generally recommended that you set um, the blur to um, blur radius to correspond with the megapixel of your camera. So in my case, it was 50. Um, this is going to be way over the top. So what we're going to do, um, we're going to decrease this down to zero. And I'm just going to subtly dial it back in until I reach a point that I'm pretty happy with the overall image, which is probably about here. But with that said, I don't love what it's doing to the headline. I think it's warmed it up a little bit too much. So I'm just going to subtly bring that back, back by creating a layer mask. So select down here, um, use my paintbrush, just going to make it a bit bigger. Um, probably just decrease my opacity down a bit. And I'm just going to paint over the headland bit, which is where I want to take away um, the Orton effect that's been applied. And I'm just going to subtly paint over the sky a bit too. Cool. How are we going? So that's before. This is after. I'm just also going to dial down the saturation as I actually don't like how heavy handed I've gone with that one. It's a bit better. Cool. Um, next thing I want to do, I'm just going to play around with the blues a bit. Just decreasing the blues in my scene a bit and playing with the hue a bit. Um, I guess what I'm doing here, I'm just going for a more colder blue in the scene. Um, that's entirely up to you though. Like there's no right or wrong way of doing that. It's just generally what I sometimes prefer in my images. Um, probably the last thing I'm going to do before I wrap things up is just add a vignette to the image, um, which effectively is really just darkening the edges. Um, so what I'm doing to create that is creating a soft light layer, um, filling with 50% gray as I have with my dodge and burn layers. I'm just going to make my brush size pretty big, um, selected black, obviously, as I'm trying to darken, um, setting it down to about 20%. Oh yeah, I'll do. I'm just going to paint over. Um, you're probably wondering why am I doing this? I I like by, that by doing it, it just really centers the viewer's um, focus on the middle of the frame, which is where the action's happening. Um, I don't think there's lots on the outer part of the frame to really grab them. So for that reason, um, creating this pretty heavy vignette as I think it really draws the viewer in um, down from the bottom here, all the way through the middle up into the nice light without getting distracted on what's on the side. And there you have it. That's really all I'm going to do today for this image. Um, as you can see, it's been pretty simple kind of edit. Um, this is the before and this is the after. So as I said earlier in the tutorial, um, I really love the channel mixer um, technique that Matt Donovan's shared in his past tutorials. I'll share this later. And also I'll put in the description field, a link to luminosity masks. Obviously we're not an affiliate link, just um, sharing for others if they're generally interested in what they are. Um, if you are a landscape photographer, I really think there's something that'll take your photography editing to the next level. Um, but with that said though, they're not necessarily needed for every image edit. Um, I didn't use them that heavy handed here today. Um, you sure can use them a lot more than I have here. But with that said, they're a great 
um, arsenal to have in any um, photographer's toolkit and would really recommend using them. So there we have it, um, my image from Cadillac Canyon, uh, so the before again and the after. Thanks very much for watching and if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section. Thank you.